we're going to talk to Paul Borden from the Southern Automotive Media Association, SAMA, who celebrated its uh, fourth annual Topless in Miami event to pick the best uh, convertibles in the market. How are you, Paul? Doing fine, Javier. How are you? Thank you very much. Uh, and again, uh, I think this is the second year that I'm not being able to attend, so I feel really sorry for that, but I'm uh, really happy to talk to you. Uh, <laughs> to, to I'm sorry you couldn't be there. Exactly, to do a recap of it. So I've been uh, seeing some coverage on social media and all that stuff. So tell us about it. How was it? Uh, we were a little concerned, obviously, uh, for the day before when it was raining basically all afternoon. Whether it was it was heavy, of course, by the mainland, but this time it was even raining down around the hotel. And we woke up to overcast weather on Thursday morning, but it broke up and it was a beautiful day and a very active day. And not quite as taxing as it was before when we had to drive 17 because we changed our format a little, but it worked out really well. It's uh, it's been growing the event, right? I mean, for the fourth event, uh, there's there's more cars, uh, more participation. Also, I saw that some uh, colleagues from other parts of the country came to cover it. That's great too. Right, we had a couple people down from Gamma, the Greater Atlanta Automotive Media Association. Uh, of course, we had our usual turnout, probably around. I believe I don't know whether we ever got an exact count, but it was over 70 members who were down here to uh, take part. Uh, they drove uh, 17 different convertibles and judged them and scored them in five different categories. And then we had a special board that basically went through the five category winners and selected a convertible of the year. And that's great because I think in past years, if I remember, it's been uh, kind of tough to pick the winners because, I mean, there's such a difference, right? I mean... Uh, right, well, we scored, uh, it was scored a little bit different this time. We asked uh, members to rate the convertibles one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five. There was one category that had five entrants, the others had three at least, uh, the way we break it down. And uh, the voting was in all the categories were extremely, was extremely close. In one category, it came down to one vote, and wow. uh, so it was really uh, a competitive situation. Yeah, there's a there's a lesson also for that uh, famous phrase: every bound, vote counts, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's that's a good that's a good point. It certainly did. And um, like I say, I, I really was impressed with the lot of convertibles, not the the quality of the convertibles that they were in the field. So can we go? Can we go? Uh, can we go by the categories and maybe just start like uh, I, I don't know how did they, they break it down, but uh, let's start like I don't want to say the lower category, but I don't know if it was break down by price or what. There were different ways of, of looking at it. We, we struggled with this because different cars were fit in different categories. I think we had we had three cars that were all around two hundred thousand dollars or more in what we call our super luxury exotic class. We had the uh, Bentley Continental GT, which won that class. We had a uh, Porsche Turbo S, which was also in the class. And then the other one, oh gosh, now you're going to get me. The other one in the class was the Mercedes-Benz SL 65 AMG. So that's three pretty good cars right there. Yeah, absolutely. Hard to pick. Uh, the, uh, I'm sorry? Hard to pick in that category. I mean, like... It was I... extremely difficult. The luxury class was the uh, biggest class. The winner out of that was the Audi RS5. There's the Lexus 350C in there. There was uh, Infiniti Q60. Is it 60? Yeah, I believe that's correct. I'm sorry, I'm going by headline and memory. I'm a little bit dazzled and frazzled <laughs> here. But the uh, Audi RS5 won that one. Yeah. The, uh, the full size, we kind of uh, have gone back and forth with cars before. Uh, the basic standard is it, it's a convertible that seats four passengers, or it says it seats four passengers. I really think some, some backseat passengers would not have to have legs to get in that car. Yeah, those are the... the Yeah, the ones they call two plus two, right? I mean, some of those uh, seats are not really useful. For no, they're really not. Uh, the Ford Mustang came out the winner in that category, and that was a very close competition with the uh, uh, Chevy Camaro. As, 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 and then we had the Sports Roadster category. There was your Corvette was in there, and the Corvette emerged. We had the uh, Jaguar F-Type in that one, and then the Nissan 370Z, which had won last year, was the third entered, and then we had a small category, which the Mazda Miata had, uh, won that one. Uh, also in that one was the Fiat, which had won it the last three years. And yeah, they broke, the broke that. And broke the BMW that. Beetle. We were going to retire the trophy for the Fiat, uh, <laughs> but this time the uh, Mazda Miata MX-5 MX MX won. 
Yeah, I remember in the past three years, everybody was uh, saying that, wow, I mean, at the first year, obviously, the Fiat had, it was pretty new back then, and then the next two years was kind of a surprise that, see, I mean, it was close competition, I guess, huh, between those two cars. They, uh, of course, the last couple of years, they gave us special models, like it was the uh, basic one year, it was the, as you mentioned, the first year, it was the basic 500C, and then they had the, the uh, a Barth or All Barth, and then uh, I can't remember exactly the one. Uh, it was the Gucci, the Gucci edition, Gucci, I think. Gucci, that's yeah. what it was. And then this year, it was the GQ edition. So they, they were coming up with some stylish cars. <laughs> and that has the A Barth engine in it, so it, it was a, quite a treat to drive. But uh, Miata uh, finally uh, got one, which is probably one of the most underrated, I think, convertibles out there. It's a fun little car to drive, particularly when you put a manual transmission in that thing. It's just, it just was a, a little... It was the hard top also. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess it's a good timing for that car to win, which is celebrating its 25th anniversary, and it's a very popular car, and uh, they're coming up with, uh, I think, special edition for that anniversary. I don't know if that was the car that was here. No. Uh, as a matter of fact, they had scheduled that one, and then apparently that, the special, the anniversary edition was not available at the last minute, so they brought the standard MX-5, and I really thought that uh, it was impressive in its own right. So, I mean, it's uh, the event, that, again, is growing, and a, a, a pretty good participation. I mean, what uh, what was your particular uh, favorite cars? I guess uh, can you tell us is the the boat secret? <laughs> uh, what my well, uh, the way we did it this year, we, you know, I believe you probably know we do, we limited people to two categories to score each. We could get out and drive them uh, oh, the I other see. cars later because I didn't want to deny them that. But as the guy kind of in charge of the event or doing the event, we were in. Uh, doing all the scorekeeping in the afternoon where, while people were out there driving the cars. So I drove the two in my class, which was a small class, and I really liked the uh, Miata. And then I also drove the what, the full size, what used to be family at one time, until the Camaro wanted them to say, well, I'm not really sure that what family is driving com uh, V8 Camaros these days. But <laughs> yeah. anyway, I drove, <laughs> drove the Mustang, the Camaro, and then the uh, Jeep Wrangler was in that category also. Jeep Wrangler, you know, I tell you, I was surprised at the quality of ride in that. Obviously, it's a, it's an off-road vehicle, but the quality of road on the pavement was pretty good, pretty impressive. Yeah, all those Jeeps, uh, the new generation of Jeeps are, are pretty amazing, and uh, that's a very popular car here in South Florida, too. I mean, you guys see it all over the place, and uh, it's a really, I mean, it's not like a traditional convertible, but once you take that top, it's pretty fun to do, too. No, it's not a traditional convertible. You got that right. I don't know, you know, you, you don't push a button to put the top up or down. There's a little operation there. And uh, this also was the four-door edition, which has been around for, what, a couple of years? You might correct me on that. Yeah. But I believe it was at least that that they, they uh, introduced that. So it was a it was a surprising little ride. So I, it, you know, it, it got some votes in that category, so you can't ever tell. Exactly. So, Paul, I mean, uh, I mean, this finished already now, and uh, I guess the fifth anniversary is going to be even bigger, I guess, huh? Because, I mean, it's kind of... Uh, I hope so. We had the one that uh, we were kind of disappointed we didn't get in. Uh, the Mini Cooper, we could not, uh, they could not get it to us. But other than that, we had pretty much every convertible that's out there. The smart car was not there. I think they still had the one that you can take the top down. Kind of, sort of, kind of like the Fiat. Some people might quibble that the Fiat is... is uh, it's a different kind of convertible, too, yeah. as you well know. You keep the frame. That, the Mini Cooper, and a, you know, either that, the Mini Cooper uh, convertible, or, or the um, Mini Cooper Roadster would have been nice to have. That's a fun little car to drive. Yeah, and, and the great thing, I mean, for uh, for us, the members of Sama and also the manufacturers, is that it's getting to begin to be competitive. So I, I bet the the on manufacturers want to win these things. So they're gonna be, keep bringing uh, great cars for next year. Right. Well, I had, I hope they do. Uh, you know, like, like I said, I had people who, you know, t just talking to the various people as it came in. Uh, one in particular was talking, and, and she was saying, oh, you know, the first car she drove, she was really impressed by it. And then she drove another one. She says, oh, well, this is much better. And then she drove a third one. And by the time she finished driving uh, the, the car, all the five cars in her category, the first one kind of paled a little bit in comparison. You know, so it was just starting out good <laughs> and going, getting better and then getting best. So it was kind of progressed up the line that way. Great. So the Bentley GT Continental, uh, the winner overall, right? No, no, no. The, uh, the, I'm sorry if I didn't mention that. No, the Audi RS5 won. We looked at that and uh, as, as far as I mean, there's, obviously there's nothing, I mean, the Bentley uh, is, is an impressive car. We, we like the Audi RS5 
more for the uh, for the performance overall, you know, in the South Florida market. Wow, that's not great. That, not that where Bentley is not appealing. So, ben- oh, 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 so I, I was wrong then. Like Bentley won uh, the the big convertible category, the that, super luxury. Correct. They won the super luxury exotic again. The RS this year also, as you as you can tell, we we in the past we've selected the convertible of the year that wasn't really the class winner, but this year we thought it made better sense to have picked the convertible of the year from one of the five class winners, and that's what we did this year. Again, that was the Bentley Continental GT and the super uh, super luxury exotic. Uh, the uh, Audi RS5 in, in the um, luxury and in the Mustang and in the full size, the Corvette, which is a, a really a, a quite a change. I mean, really quite an improvement step up from the previous generation Corvette was the uh, Roadster uh, Sport and then the uh, the Miata, Mazda Miata, again, for the small. I might point out that, that performance king, uh, category came down to like uh, one vote. And as I mentioned earlier, it was it, all the... The uh, con- all the uh, voting was was pretty tight, and that was the tightest. Excellent. Well, Paul, thank you very much, and uh, everybody and the audience can go to Sama. Uh, online.org to see all the pictures and video for the coverage from all our colleagues from uh, here organization and uh, I'm gonna try to make better schedule for myself next year to make sure to be there okay well we'll try to nail down down that day uh, yeah, there were a couple other members that couldn't matter it was really sad because I know that uh, I, all the members seem to enjoy it I know you have been there in the past and certainly enjoyed it and uh, do the best we can on that to make sure you're there next year thank you very much Paul thank you Javier. bye bueno, ahí están los resultados de Top Less en Miami y ya regresamos aquí con más en Auto 060 en Cristina Radio Network. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.